Okay, so one more example here of using our identities for sums and differences of angles. So suppose we want to figure out tangent of 165 degrees, which I, we can write as a tangent of 210 degrees minus 45 degrees. Well, okay, we didn't give an identity for tangent, but uh, recall, uh, you know, in terms of these sums and differences, yet at least, uh, but recall we can write tangent as sine over cosine. So we would have a uh, sine of 165 degrees over cosine of 165 degrees. But now we could simply use our identity on this. Um, so again, we can write the numerator as 210 degrees minus 45 degrees over cosine of 210 degrees minus 45 degrees. And now we'll simply use our identities a couple times. So let's see, let's go back here. So um, <clears throat> it said if we have sine of something uh, minus something, it says we take sine of the first thing, which is 210 degrees, so I'm using this first identity. It says we take cosine of the next value, which would be 45 degrees, if there's a negative sign in there, we keep the negative sign. So then we'll get cosine of 210 degrees times uh, sine of the second, which is 45 degrees. <clears throat> All right, now we've got to do the same thing on the bottom. So we're going to have to expand out this, uh, use our, our, our cosine identity. So here uh, we've got cosine of x minus y. So we'll get cosine of the first, uh, the first term, which is 210 degrees, times cosine of the second one, which is 45 degrees. I put this in parentheses at random. I don't know why. Uh, let's see. So again, we said that there's a, a minus sign in between. And that means for cosine, the cosine identity, we put a, actually a plus in between. And then it says we use sine of the first value, which is 210 degrees. Um, and then we use sine of the second one, which is 45 degrees. Alrighty, so now it's just unit circle stuff, or maybe you've got these all memorized. Um, let's see if we can't think about them here. Um, let's see, so 210 degrees, um, that'll be 180 degrees, and then another 30 degrees. So I'm thinking about the, the reference angle of 30 degrees over here. And at 30 degrees on the unit circle, the place we would hit the unit circle would be at root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. So that means at 210 degrees, we're actually going to be at the point negative root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Okay, so that goes with the angle 210 degrees here. So let's see, uh, sine of 210 degrees is going to be the y-coordinate. Um, the y-coordinate is going to be negative 1 half. Let's see, cosine of 45 degrees, that's just root 2 over 2. Let's see, minus uh, cosine of 210 degrees. Well, again, uh, cosine of 210 degrees is going to be negative root 3 over 2. And again, sine of 45 degrees, that's simply going to be square root of 2 over 2. Let's see, in the denominator, we have cosine of 210 degrees. And again, we said cosine of 210 degrees was negative root 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Plus sine of 210 degrees, we said that was negative 1 half. Sine of 45 degrees will be root 2 over 2. <clears throat> Alrighty, so let's see here. Um, just got to simplify down this nice little fraction. Shouldn't be too bad. So in the numerator, we'd have it looks like negative square root of 2 over 4. Um, the negative and the negative will make a positive. Square root of 3 times the square root of 2 will be square root of 6, again, over 4. In the denominator, it looks like we'll have a negative root 3 times negative, excuse me, negative root 3 times root 2 which is going to give us negative square root of 6, again, over 4 when we multiply. Then we'll get a negative uh, square root of 2 over 4. And now, simply, you know, we would like to clean this up a little bit. Probably the easiest thing to me is just to get rid of the fractions. We can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4. 
So if we do that, we would have to distribute. So when we distribute it to the first term, again, the 4s will just cancel, and that'll leave us with negative root 2. When we distribute it to the second term, again, the 4s will cancel, so we'll have positive root 6. And then in the denominator, uh, the same thing. If we multiply by the 4, uh, if we distribute the 4, we'll get negative root 6. Uh, the 4s, again, will cancel, and it looks like we'll have negative root 2. And to me, this is probably where I would leave it. You know, I wouldn't do uh, much more than that. You could always factor negatives out, maybe distribute that to the numerator. Uh, you know, have a little more, a few more positives. You could uh, rationalize the denominator, but uh, let's don't worry about that here. Um, again, emphasis here just on the identity. So, um, you know, it's just again knowing. This is kind of the tricky thing about trig is you've got to know lots of identities to be able to do problems. Unfortunately. Um, and these are just things that you have to commit to memory. So, um, again, just a little illustration, at least on at, at least one place, how you could use these uh, these identities to evaluate some other trig functions.